The Cannington Silver Lead Zinc Deposit stands as one of the most extraordinary geological marvels of the modern mining world. Hidden beneath the ancient landscapes of the Mount Isa in Lyre, it holds within its depths a rich history of formation, transformation and enrichment that spans over a billion years. Situated within the eastern succession of this Proterozoic terrain, Cannington is considered one of the richest silver deposits in the world due to its extraordinarily high grade silver content in comparison to most other polymetallic deposits. The ore boasts an average silver grade of approximately 538 grams per tonne of crushed ore, making it exceptionally silver rich relative to typical base metal deposits. In some zones, silver concentrations can be even higher, particularly where late stage hydrothermal fluids have further enriched the system. This astonishing silver grade, coupled with a significant lead concentration of 11.6% and zinc concentrations of 4.4%, results in an incredibly profitable and high value ore body. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. And if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. Born in the fire of tectonic upheaval and bathed in the crucible of time, Cannington's story begins over 1.6 billion years ago, in a world starkly different from our own. The Earth was a restless and volatile sphere, its crust stretching and fracturing as deep-seated forces pulled at its foundations. The Mount Isa region lay at the heart of an ancient rifting event, where vast sedimentary basins formed in response to powerful extensional forces. This was a realm of rising and falling oceans, of shifting continents, of colossal fault systems that ripped apart the land. This was the breakup of the supercontinent Nuna. Within these basins, mineral-laden fluids seep through the fractures, mingling with sediments rich in iron, manganese and carbonate. Over time, these fluids laid the foundation of what would become one of the richest silver lead zinc deposits known to humankind. The primeval world that fostered Cannington was one of transformation. As the Earth's plates continued their exonerable dance, the basin that hosted this mineralization was buried, compressed, and heated to unimaginable extremes. The slow patient alchemy of metamorphism gripped the rocks, forcing their atoms into new arrangements, transmuting simple sediments into a complex tapestry of gneisses, quartzites, schists, and amphibolites. Under this immense pressure and heat, the original sulphide-rich mineralization was not merely preserved, it was reforged. Its textures erased and rewritten by the forces of nature. Yet even this metamorphic baptism was not the end of Cannington's odyssey. The relentless movements of the crust twisted and folded the deposit, creating sweeping isoclinal folds that repeated and concentrated the ore. A great structural symphony unfolded over millions of years, where ductile strain wove all lenses into sinuous patterns, while brittle deformation shattered and displaced the mineralized zones. These dramatic shifts, dictated by the unseen power of geodynamic forces, created the complex geometry that modern miners now endeavor to decipher and extract. While Cannington today is regarded as a Broken Hill type deposit, and I've made a video on Broken Hill, you can find a link to that in the description down below, its origins are far more enigmatic. Geological evidence suggests that it may have started as a sedimentary exhalative deposit, or a sedex deposit, where metal-rich hydrothermal fluids vented onto the seafloor, mingling with fine sediments in an ancient anoxic ocean basin. This process, occurring over thousands of years, led to the accumulation of vast quantities of zinc, lead, and silver in fine layers of sulphide minerals. These early sulphide deposits rich in galena and sphalerite, lay hidden beneath deep waters, slowly buried by accumulating sediments over millions of years. However, unlike many sedex deposits that remained relatively untouched by tectonic forces, Cannington was later subjected to intense metamorphism, obliterating much of its original texture and remobilizing its metals into the strata-bound, high-grade ore lenses we see today. As mentioned before, the formation of Cannington is closely linked to the breakup of the ancient supercontinent Nuna. 
an event that profoundly reshaped the geodynamics of the Proterozoic world. During this period, extensive crustal extension and rifting led to the development of deep sedimentary basins that would later become the repository for the metal-rich hydrothermal fluids that formed the initial SEDEC style mineralization. As Nuna fragmented, the resulting tectonic stresses triggered widespread metamorphism and deformation, remobilizing the original sulfide deposits and enhancing their grade through structural repetition and fluid-driven enrichment. This prolonged sequence of geological events transformed a once buried mineral system into the world-class silver lead zinc deposit that Cannington is today. The process of silver lead and zinc deposition in such profound numbers is a story of immense geological precision. The initial SEDEC style mineralization concentrated metals from deep in the Earth's crust into a confined basin where reducing conditions allowed sulfides to precipitate out of solution. But it was the later metamorphic transformation that elevated Cannington to its current status as one of the world's richest silver deposits. Heat and pressure recrystallized the sulfides, increasing their grain size and forming dense, concentrated ore shoots. Additionally, later hydrothermal fluids, driven by deep-seated tectonic activity, enriched the system further, introducing more silver and rare minerals like fribergite. The combination of an exceptional primary ore forming process with this later metamorphic and metasomatic refinement resulted in a deposit of staggering richness and complexity. But what truly sets Cannington apart from other deposits of its kind is the process of post-metamorphic metasomatism that further enriched its ores. As tectonic activity waned and cooler fluids infiltrated the system, these chemical messengers carried elements that refined and enhanced the existing mineralization. Fluorite, magnetite, hedenbergite, and pyroxmangite were introduced, forming stunning mineral assemblages that provide invaluable clues to the geological history of this remarkable deposit. Silver, already present in abundance, was further concentrated by these late-stage hydrothermal overprints, rendering Cannington one of the most silver-rich deposits on Earth. This enrichment was so profound that even among the world's greatest Broken Hill type deposits, Cannington wealth in silver remains unparalleled, an almost poetic combination of eons of mineralogical refinement. The deposit's final shaping occurred as brittle faults sliced through the ore body, dividing it into the northern and southern zones that today guide modern extraction. The Trapel Fault Zone, a stark reminder of the Earth's enduring dynamism, cleaved the system, creating the structural complexities that make mining Cannington a formidable yet rewarding endeavour. With the final touch of nature's sculpting hand, the deposit was buried beneath the sands of time, concealed under layers of Cretaceous and recent sediments. For millions of years it lay undiscovered, hidden beneath the surface, waiting for the keen eyes and innovative minds of geologists to unveil its secrets. The discovery of Cannington in 1990 was the culmination of relentless pursuit. Geophysicists scoured the land with aeromagnetic surveys, seeking the whispering hints of mineralization buried far below. When drilling finally intersected its ores, it was as if a new chapter of Earth's history had been revealed. What followed was an unprecedented exploration and mining effort that saw this once forgotten rock emerge as the world's largest silver producer. Today Cannington stands as a beacon of what is possible when the mysteries of deep time are unraveled, when the patience of geological processes meets the determination of human endeavour. Recent petrophysical studies have shown that the deposit exhibits strong magnetic susceptibility due to the presence of abundant magnetite, differentiating it from many classic SEDEC systems. This distinct magnetic signature played a pivotal role in its discovery as airborne geophysical surveys detected an isolated anomaly, prompting the first drill tests. Furthermore, geochemical analysis of the ores indicates a significant variation in lead-zinc ratios between the northern and southern zones, which correlates with differences in structural strain and fluid flow history. These insights not only enhance the understanding of Cannington's complex genesis, but also aid in refining exploration models for similar deposits concealed beneath thick sedimentary cover. 
To understand Cannington is to glimpse the grand narrative of our planet's evolution. To see in its rocks the echoes of ancient oceans, the scars of tectonic battles, the whispers of hydrothermal flows. It is a place where the story of Earth's past is written in mineral and stone, a chronicle of metamorphism, deformation and enrichment that has left behind one of the most treasured mineral endowments of our time. It is a geological marvel, an economic powerhouse, and above all, a reminder that the Earth, in its ceaseless transformation, is the ultimate architect of riches beyond imagining. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.